Hello Rocket fans and welcome to a short update on the parachute test that we will be having on the 21st of April. Uh, we will be testing three parachutes, the green main parachute, the Hulk, I think we should call it. We will test the ribbon hemisflow or the spaghetti monster, the flying spaghetti monster. And then we will also have a uh, last test of the um, supersonic X or the onion that we are testing. For the onion, what we're doing is basically just to uh, make sure that the numbers we got the last time are correct under a uh, or above another parachute guy. We have not made no modifications on it. We just want to make sure the uh, drag coefficient that we have on it is is correct uh, according to what we measured the last time we flew with it. Then we have made some modifications on the uh, on the Hulk or the uh, green main parachute. And we have modified the flying spaghetti monster a little bit. And those are the two most important things that we are going to text, test uh, the next time. For the uh, Hulk, we modified the, um, the way we placed the reefing box here. This is uh, the gadget that we're using to make sure that the parachute opens up correctly. And what we had done with the last test we did on this parachute was that it was hanging, this part here was hanging below the uh, the lowest part of the actual parachute. And that uh, ended up causing the uh, the reefing line to uh, get snagged in it. And um, we almost didn't have a fully open parachute. That was a mistake because I had actually learned from a previous test where we did exactly the same thing. And then back in the days, we moved it up. This time, uh, the last time we tested this, I got lazy and did the old thing again. And we, for some weird reason, got the same error once again. So now I should have learned not to do that again. So now we're testing this with the two of these boxes, one of each side of the parachute in these pockets here. And just to remind you what it is that they do. So the idea is when the parachute is opening up, the the line that goes around the bottom circumference of the parachute will actually tighten up and that will trigger a um, switch here which will start a timer. It will either go to 10 seconds for one timer and for this specific one we have a small 20 here. This will count to 20 seconds and then after 20 seconds this cutter here will, uh, will basically cut this line that goes around the circumference of the parachute. It is set up in such a way actually that uh, if only one of them uh, activates, it will still open the parachute up. So, um, so that's a, a setup we have that uh, makes sure that the, the parachute will get to a slow descent speed in the end. So that's what we've changed on the, uh, on the green one here. And this is the, um, the, the reefing timer box as it has looked for quite so many years now and uh, it's it's a magnificent work by Bo, one of our electronics guys and uh, I really appreciate the uh, the work that he's putting into this. The other thing that we've tested or we're going to test next time is the um, infamous ribbon hemisflow drove parachute or as we call it the flying spaghetti monster. We've had it uh, under a lot of love and uh, tested it quite a few times as well with various success actually and uh, I'm sure that uh, right now um, Saruna or Martin will edit in the, uh, the, the good uh, tests we've had and the failures we've had or basically just the failures. But what we've seen is uh, some weird behavior even though I tried to follow the design book uh, to every detail. What I've done this time is that for the lower third section of the uh, of the drogue parachute, I've added basically just another vertical ribbon for every other ribbon that was already there. And the idea is that that will uh, catch a little bit more air and reducing the, um, the, the amount of air that can go through in the bottom. And that should help um, open up the parachute so that it will be fully inflated. Uh, with the next test. And um, I am using the word hopefully because with with these kind of um, tests that we're doing in the parachute area, it is exceptionally hard, at least at our level, 
to do theoretical work or theoretical uh, simulations of how this will behave. So the only way we can be sure of uh, seeing a behavior is by jumping out of a perfectly good airplane and uh, and see what happens. Unfortunately, Martin is uh, once again helpful at the Odense Skydiving Center. And uh, he's even been so kind this time that he's actually paying for the t test. So uh, I really want to thank you, Martin, for, uh, for this. Uh, it, as you already know, means really a lot to me and to uh, Copenhagen Suborbital. So, so thank you so much for your support and trust in what we are doing. I know that you also think this is very fun, but uh, it still uh, is a lot of money for, for a guy like you to, to pay out. So thank you. Um, so this is basically what we're testing. I think this is the most important test. Um, and I think I've said it before that uh, this is the final one. I don't want to mess with this anymore. And um, that's also why I am taking the onion with me this time so that I, with the um, comparison between this and the, the, uh, the onion, can, can see how they behave with the Martin under them. And um, I think I have no more tricks up the sleeve now in, in order to, to make a decision. So if this fails, um, then I feel pretty sure that uh, we will go in the direction of the onion, but we'll see. Um, maybe someone will contact me and uh, give me yet another idea of what to do. And uh, if that happens, uh, then um, you may, um, yeah, I don't know, but hopefully this is what we're testing April 21st. If you're in Denmark, if you are near Odense, do come by Odense Skydiving Center and say hello. It will be uh, very nice to meet you all uh, who shows up and uh, see you soon again. The reason we're getting so close to reaching space on our speaker rocket is because all of our crowdfunding supporters. If you enjoy watching these insider videos on building a space program and you would like to become an even bigger part of it, you can help us out by going over to our website www.copsum.com and becoming a supporter with a small monthly or one-time donation. We all do this for free in our spare time, so you'd be surprised how much every little bit helps. And thank you if you feel like what we do and share is interesting.